Hey everyone, it's Fairy Witch One here. I hope you're all having a great Yule or had a great Yule because it was the 22nd. And for those of you who are enjoying Christmas Eve, I hope you're all having a great night. Anyway, let's continue with the subject that I want to talk to you about today, and that is standing stones. Now, the best example of standing stones that most of you out there will know is Stonehenge. But I'm going to just tell you a bit more about standing stones, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Now, ancient standing stones are great for tuning with fairies and elementals. These stones are the power points of natural magic, and some have interesting myths and legends attached to them. They're all right stones in Oxfordshire, that's in England, for example, are said to be a bewitched king and his company of knights. They stand in a circle with a smaller group of stones known as the Whispering Knights, close by. These are believed to be oraculia stones, so basically like oracle stones, pardon me, and may whisper your fortune. The Haltadines are a circle of stones at Fetler in the Shetlands. Legend states that these stones were once trolls who danced till dawn when the rays of the rising sun turned them into stone. On the Isle of Skye are two natural stone pillars, although one has now fallen over. Legend states that they were once a husband and wife out looking for the lost castle and cat lost cattle. They came across a magical giant who turned them into stone. Of all the standing stones and megaliths of Britain, Stonehenge is the most famous. Like I said before, most of you out there will know Stonehenge. Although it is more than 4,000 years old, we are still none of the wiser as it's to its original purpose or even know how it came to be constructed. Was it a temple in place of ritual? Was it some kind of calendar attuned with the seasons and the stars? Was it a place of human sacrifice? The truth is that we will probably never know for certain and we can only ever make an educated guess. But Stonehenge will always be a place associated with mystery, enchantment, pagan magic and fairy activity. And it's never more popular than on the summer solstice or midsummer's day. So that is my talk to you. Sorry if I sound funny or I've been pronouncing things wrong. I have got a bit of a cold and I am dyslexic as well. So I hope you all have a blessed day and I hope the holidays are treating you well and bless it be. And I will do a video about midsummer. I'll probably do that tonight because I feel as though I'm going to do a few videos. So bless it be.